programming and Java. Today, we are going to treat the four statements because to be honest, we shouldn't treat the four statements because I gave you some video to watch on the four statement, but I know you didn't watch it and I will not say anything. So for today, we are going to have an example of a four statement or loops and discuss what is a loop and how we can use our programming code our programming code to deal with loops. Now, I would explain loops using certain criteria. So I'll first explain it with the layman's term, and then I will come and explain it from the point of view of a program. The loops we have, the while loop, the do while loop, the for loop, and of course we have the for each loop when we come to Java. We would discuss into detail all of these three. Let's start with the while loop. So as I said, I would give a real world example, and then I would come and give a, 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 a more structured example of it. By the way, can you all hear me? You guys are, yeah, I can yeah. hear you from my yeah. hand. Okay. So now let's see that. Um, I have been paid this month. And since this month is the month of December, I decide that I will take all of you in this classroom out. And all of us in this classroom are going to go out and have a drink up. So everybody in this room and me will go to a pub and have a drink up. And then when we get to the pub, to have the drinker. I will check my pocket and see that in my pocket, I have a thousand Ghana cities. So I will tell the Bama that, hey, Bama, supply all my six boys and I, so seven of us, a bottle of club so that we all drink and be merry and happy. When we are done, now tell I will check my pocket again to see if the money in which I have is enough to go for a second round. Then we'll go for the second round again. Again, let's look at the activities I did. When we go to the bar, I checked my pocket to see the amount of money I have. And since the amount of money I have can pay for the drinks, I went ahead to order the drinks for us to have our soiree. Now, over here, the dual. Under this scenario, when we get to the bar, the same bar, I'm going to tell the barman to supply us with the drinks. And when he supplies us with the drinks, then... I will check my pocket and see if I can pay. For the four, I am going to check my pocket, divide my money into the number of times we can drink and give everything to the barman and tell him that, oh, for the money I have in my pocket, we can go for rounds of drinks seven times. So please, after the seventh time, stop. Now let's have a more practical definition of these three things. With the while statement, I will check to see if a certain condition is satisfied before I'll perform any work action. So whilst a certain condition is in play, I will perform 
a group or a single activity or word, action. For the do well, I'm saying that I will do a particular action. I will do it. Now, when I am done doing it, I will go and check if my condition is still what? In play. For the fourth statement, I will initialize my activity. So initialize means that, oh, my activity is starting from one or zero or three or four, my starting point. What is my starting point? I will define a condition in which I would use to stop my activities being performed. And I will also tell the computer how many times it should perform the activity. And then I'll close it off with the actions that should be performed. Again, with the wow, I will check. Oh, can I do this? Then I will do it. With the do, I will do it before I'll go and check if I can what? Do it. With the four, I will know I'm starting from here. I'll know where I'm ending at. Then I will do them till I get to where I'm supposed to work. Stop. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? For me, no, sir. I'm very sorry about that. So, as I was saying, these points are clear. Let us see in practice how these things would be what used. How will we test them? We'll test them with certain scenarios and we'll see how they will all run in these scenarios. So over here, I'm going to start us off by writing a program to display the first 20 numbers in horizontal and vertical direction. It is very important for those of you here who, who, who are pursuing programming and stuff to note that the course is not about the problems we solve. It is about the structures. It is your creativity that would manifest the structures into various things. I can teach you the problems. I can teach you how to identify certain things and problems. But if I could teach you the problems itself, to be honest with you, we will not need this class. There will be no need for program. Because in this world we are in, there are lots of problems and people watch those problems break them down into lines and put them into code. 10 years ago, we didn't have Uber. Now we have Uber. So as much as that you find difficulty in the problems, try 
and remember that there is a structure that you are supposed to dwell on. So how do you get this problem to fit into a particular structure? Then you will use that to solve your way through. Anyway, this is the programming which we want to do. Now, let's see if we can understand the programming which we want. We are going to display the first 20 numbers. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to what, 20. We want to display them in horizontal direction and in vertical what, direction. We would use the while, the for, and the do while as examples for each. Are we okay? Let us see how we would achieve this. I would first of all open up my IntelliJ. Okay, and of course, I will start off with a new project. In here, I'll call my project um, display. Display numbers. And I'll click on what? Create. I want to open it in a new window. So I have this. I'll go to my SRC, and then inside my SRC, I'll see my main file there, and I'll write all my code in here. Over here, I'll come in here, and then I'll write my code in the middle over here. So my all my code is going to be where? In here. Okay. So I am supposed to display the first 20 numbers. Does it require any input from anybody? No, because we know that the, the first twenty numbers. So there's no need for me to tell the person enter the number of numbers we want to display. If the question says that, then I have to do that. But in this case, the question didn't present that, so there is no need for me to even worry myself to do that. Now, here I'm going to tell the computer. that my starting number is going to be what? One. And I'm going to tell the computer that whilst my starting number is less than or equal to 20, continue to do this. And what should it continue to do? It should continue to system.out.print With an LN, my starting number. Now, when I run this, something is going to happen. What are the various things which are going to happen? My program is going to keep on displaying one. We can see that. Is displaying one down there non stop. Why is my program displaying one non stop? Again, it is not okay enough for you to know that it is doing something, you must know why it is doing that. Now, the why is this? I am telling the computer that whilst my number is less than 20, my number is one. Every single time I go through this thing, one after the other after the other, it is always going to be what? One. I'm telling the computer to do this over and over and over and over and over again, whilst number is less than what? 20. I have not found a way to increase the number from one to two to three till it gets to 20. Hence, for the computer, number is always going to be run. So it is going to run as an infinity loop. That is a loop that does not have an end. 
So that means that if the condition, you don't find a way to stop the condition, your program is going to run and never work. Stop. Now it is here that somebody can think of some devious things like creating a one kilobyte file. So I'll write a small program, send it to you, and the program will be running in your background, creating a one kilobyte file nonstop. Now to you, that sounds useless because one kilobyte, what will you do? One kilobyte nonstop means that it will start to add up to turn into one gig, two gig, three gig, 300 gig, 400 gig. So the person will be sitting there and then his memory will be coming big. Then his computer will crash because he has no memory. And he's, he's done himself, ah, but I didn't create any file. You did. Because I sent you the work, the code. We do not want loops to run as an infinity loop. Hence, if you are using while and you are using do while, you must find a way to increment the values in the condition. So inside the loop here, I'm going to tell the computer that every time you print something out, number should be equal to number plus what? One. Remember what we said in the beginning. For the computer, it will do this computation in this side and go and put the answer of the computation in what? This side. So if I am running this application line by line, the application will go as follows. Line four, it says int number is equal to one. Line five, whilst number, which is one, is less than 20, System.out.word print number. So it will print out word one. It will go to line seven. That is number, that is one plus one, which makes it two, and put the answer in number. So it means that now number is what? Two. It then comes to this side here. But before it can leave the world, it has to go and check if it has the condition has been satisfied for it to leave. So it will come back to here. It's two less than 20. Yes, it is. So it means he has to come back in here and then go and display what? Two. Now, if I am to run this program, again, we would see that I will not have just ones popping up, but I will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to what? 19. But there is a problem. I'm supposed to display up to what? 20. Now, 20 is not bigger than 20. They are equal. So for me to have 20 also displaying, it means that I need to add an equal to sign on line what? Five. Once I rerun this again, I should now see everything displaying up to what? 20. This is displayed everything in the horizontal way. I want it vertical. So for me to get it vertical, it means here I have to remove the LN from there, and then I can rerun it again. But when I rerun it again, let's see what happens. Everything there is going to show in the vertical way, like I want it, but they are together. So it is difficult for someone to watch, read. So over here, I need to add the concatenation sign plus, and then the double quote, and what? Space. So that when I run this, it will display as one space, two space, three space, for up to what? 20. Placement, direction, control. Everything you type in the code, you control what happens on the screen. You should know what will happen on the screen before you even click on the uh, uh, compile button. You control it. 
if you want something to display horizontal, if you want it to display vertical, how it will display is controlled by you. Everything there is controlled by you. And you have to understand what to do to make it do what you want. This is the code for the wow statement. I'm going to use a multi-line comment to comment it out. Now let's do the do wow. So over here, I'm going to say do. And what am I doing? I am doing system.out. dot print ln number and here I'm going to say while number is less than 20. Again I'm going to initialize number as what one over here. Now let's watch something very carefully. Over here, if I change the value here to one and I run this program, ideally, if it was the while statement, the program would display nothing because one is not bigger than what one. But if it is the do statement, it will display one. Why will the do statement display one and the while statement not display? Because we said in the do that it will perform the action before it go to check the what. Condition. In what scenarios would you use this? Every five minutes, your camera should check the room. If there is an intruder, then blow an alarm. So do checking of the room. If there is an intruder, what? Blow the alarm. The practical usage of these statements are abundant. But for this, again, I'll make here what? Print it. And then I'll run it. Again, we would have an infinity loop because I didn't put in number plus plus over here. Now, number plus plus is the same as me saying number is equal to number plus what? One. So when I run this program again, I should get up to 19. Now we all know why we are getting 19 because we didn't put in an equal to sign over here. So once an equal to sign comes there, then we should be getting up to what? 19. Again, I am leaving the pitfalls here for you to see. Why is this happening? Why don't I get this result? Why is it that when I do this, I get that? All of these questions here, I am leaving in the errors for you to see, and I'm correcting them for you to also what, see. So that when you get them, you don't need to panic. You just need to watch the structure and adjust it so that to get the result in which you want. Again, over here, we have the for statement. And in the for statement, I am going to initialize the starting point of my number, which is going to be one. I am going to also I am going to also specify the condition of which my program should stop. And my program should stop when number is less than or equal to 20. And how many steps am I going to take? I'm going to take number is equal to number plus what? One. That means I should be increasing my value by one each time. Of course, number is equal to number plus one can be written as number plus plus. Hence, over here, I have this. For me to write my system.out.print number over here. 
Again, if I run this, it should give me the values in horizontal. If I wanted vertical, then I would have to take the ln from there and give a space for it to display in vertical. Same code, different ways of work doing it. Note that the for statement has a predefined end. That means for the for statement, we know when it is going to what end. For the do and do while, we do not know, we know when it's going to end, but we have no increments to help us to get there. That means that you have to know that inside the body, you would have to put some plus plus there or some minus minus there to help get you to where you want to work, get to. Let us take another question. Asterix way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to comment out the code. If this asterisk was not there, you would see it displaying one, two, three, up to twenty, one, two, three, up to twenty, one, two, three, up to twenty, three, but so this is a comment. If I leave a comment in the code, the computer will not recognize it to compile. It's mostly left to me, the developer. We normally leave a comment in a code for maintenance purposes, for documentation purposes, for remembrance of what values we are using and so on and so forth. Is that okay? Now, yes. For example, here, if I change it to five, mm -hmm. It will start from five. So it means that the starting point has changed from one to five. So it means if I run the program again, you can see that here it's a starting from what? Five. Yes, so it will read 20 numbers from five. So as you can see, it gets. Pardon? Mm -hmm. The code was not to count the numbers. It was to display the numbers to 20. So from one to 20, the first uh, 20 numbers like that. So if you want to do 20 numbers, that's you're counting them one after the other. That means that over here, if I change it to five, then here should also change to what? 25 for you to get 20 individual numbers. But if we are displaying from one to, we get to 20 and we are saying we are starting at five, of course you get 15 numbers, but you're supposed to end at what? 20. So again, it depends on the definition of which you are using to achieve the program. Let's have another example. Those online, do we have questions? Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, please, I have a question. You know. mm -hmm. um, please, uh, you know, the question was asking us to display uh, it vertically and horizontally. Uh, are, are we supposed to write the program so I display both at the same time? You, you can't write a program to display both at the same time. Like, okay. I, I don't know if you if you're understanding me. So, for example, in the question, when it actually display horizontally and vertically, it means you do one for statement for horizontal, then you come and do another for statement for what? Vertical, That's like this. Fine. So, it means that if I now run this, it will show me my answer as horizontal over here. And then at the bottom here, we'll have what? Vertical. Can we see that? Can we see yes, that? Mm -hmm. So that is how you would have solved this. Any other questions? Yes, please? sir. Yes, sir. Um, the less than sum, the power you have equal to, less than equal to 25. Uh, is the place it, I have what? 
less the greater the less than sum the less than and the equal to sum yes yes yes, yes. okay so is there any scenario where it can be greater than like instead of the less than yes of course so for those symbols that would be there they are all part of the relational operators so it means that you have the choice of using greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to okay uh -huh. less than or equal to you have the not equal to so not equal to and then you of course you have the equal to sign so you have all of these options available to you to use to get the results in which you want okay thank you sir you are welcome yeah. Any other question, please? We are all no. okay. Yeah. Okay, if we are all okay, then no. yes. Yeah, um, sorry, I joined late. I uh, just want to check for my mic. You arrived late and you wanted to take something off your mind. I wanted to check on my mic. Ah, uh, check your mic. Okay, all right, sure. So over here, we are going to write a program to display or to ask a user for 10 numbers and find the average. Are we okay? So we are going yes. to ask the user for 10 numbers and find the average. Who can tell me what the average is? The Yes, sir. Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, the average is uh, to add the total attempts to divide it by the number of attempts. Sir. You add the total numbers you have, like maybe 50, 60, 70, 80, you add them. Uh -huh. And then you add a sum uh -huh. by the total number. Okay. If we have the so three times you divide by three to okay. have the average. All right, sure. So we need to write a program to do that. So I'll copy the code over here so I can send it to you guys after the class. And then I'll clear this section here so I can write the program to find the word average. Now, you see, here is where our programming skills start to come into play. They said we should find, ask the user for 10 numbers. So am I going to create int number one, number two, number three, then I ask, enter number one, enter number two, enter number <laughs> No, Charlie, Charlie, there are some jobs in which it's not good for the, for the, for the, for the, for the man. It is no good. Now, I am going to ask the num user to enter numbers one after the other. So I'm going to repeat. The moment I'm going to repeat something, what structure allows us to repeat a loop. The question then comes in, what loop will best allow me to achieve the aim in which I want? I know that I need 10 numbers. I'm starting from number one till I get to what, 10. And when I get to 10, I will stop. Hence, I can use a for statement. 
Now, I have to save the numbers into something. So I'm going to save the numbers into a variable I'm calling int number. So I'm going to tell the computer that for int n being equal to zero, and n being less than or equal to, let me say here is one, just for shaky reasons. And then here, n is less than or equal to 11, 10, sorry, n plus plus. Now, what am I going to repeat over and over again? Are, are we with me? I'm going to ask the user, so system.out.print. Enter number plus n plus semicolon space. So this deals with something very important for me. What does it do? When I run this piece of code, let's see what happens. I would see on my screen, or I should see on my screen, enter number one, enter number two, enter number three, enter number four, enter number five, so on and so forth. So the user is going to enter the various numbers there. Now, if I ask the user to enter number one, what do you think the user will do? He'll put in a value for number one and press what? Enter. So I need to save the value the user has what? Entered. What do we use to collect information from the screen? We collect information using the object of the word scanner class. So here I'll type scanner con is equal to new scanner system dot what in. Of course, this does not go in the first statement, hence I'll be creating it over and over and over again. So it must be out of it. Are we clear on that? Now. I've created the object of the scanner class. So in here, I can say number is equal to the object of the scanner class dot next word, int. Now, what happens in this scenario again? When I run this application at this point again, let's see what happens. I would see int number one, and I will enter the value of number one. It tells me number two, I will enter the value of number two. It tells me number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10. And when I press this, it stops because that is what I told you to do. How am I getting the computer to say int number one and number two and so on? I'm using this static word here, the static int number. But where does the one, two, and three things come from? They come from the loop. I'm starting from n is equal to one. So in the initial stage, when I say int number and I add plus one, it will put in there what? One, to show me number one. Now, when the user enters the value, I am going to put in that value into the variable I created called number. But the whole objective of an average of a number is we must sum them up. So now, how do I sum up these numbers? I sum them up by creating a variable called sum and making sum equal to sum plus the word number. That means that over here, I need a variable called int word sum. So here, again, sum should have an initial value of what? Zero. Why does sum need to have an initial value of zero? Not one, not two, but zero. Because if you are adding something and I'm adding anything to zero, it is still the same word, thing. If this was multiplication, then it should have an initial value of what? One. 
Because if you multiply anything by one, you get the same what thing. So here, what is happening? I will ask the user for the number. Take the number and put it in this variable called number. And I'll come here and say that number plus sum. So let's say the number is two. Two plus zero would give me what? Two. That means that now I have banked my initial summation as what? Two. When the program comes back again, everything will be wiped off for the user to enter another number. And when he enters this new number, sum is now two. So the new number plus two would equal to the, the new word, summation. I will do this 10 times. So for example, when I come here and this entire section here runs to the end, I should be able to come out of the loop and tell you that the summation of all the numbers in which you just gave me is equal to what plus what sum. Why don't I do this inside the loop? Because inside the loop, it is still calculating the numbers. So outside the loop, it would have been done calculating the numbers for me to show you what the answer would be. Everything has a place. Everything has a meaning. Everything is supposed to be where it is for a particular reason. Now, once I know the total sum of all the 10 numbers, I can then now go and say average. And my average is going to have a data type of a double. Why does average have a data type of a double? Because I am going to divide the numbers. And if I divide, I would get decimals. So if I make average also an integer, I will be losing what? Values. Everything has a meaning, everything has a purpose. There's a reason why everything should be where it is. We have learned the structures. So it is time for us to implement them. In here again, I can go. Average should be equal to the sum over what? 10. Why 10? Because we are finding the average of 10 numbers which tends we divide by what? 10. If we're finding the average of three numbers, it means we would only accept in three numbers and divide by what? Three. Now I can tell the user that the average of the numbers is equal to the variable I created to keep average, which is A, V, E. When I run this program again, I should see enter number one, 12, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10. The sum of all my numbers is what? This, hence my average would be what? That. Everything has a meaning and a purpose and why it should be there. Everything has a meaning and a purpose and why it should be there. Today, our objective was for us to learn about loops. What is a loop? Why do we need a loop? How do we use a loop? How can we use a loop to do computations and so on and so forth? There is a video in your class group which also talks about loops. As you can see, when I come up, it should be somewhere over here. I sent it uh, on the 14th of November. So it is here, right here. Go to the group, click on this link. I think it's just an hour. It also talks about loops. We also have some separate questions over there with regard to a um, small practical based question uh, which has to do with feeds and the increment of feeds over certain years. Go solve that question over there as your 
assignment. It's not something you submit, but it is something in which you should do. Is that clear? Try it. If you have any problems, let me know. In your class group too, I will be dropping some questions over there because now we need to start ramping up. The more questions you do, the more you will see the programming become easier. With programming, you can't bypass the question phase. I am not saying you get the questions right or wrong, but what I am saying is that even if you get it wrong, you should know why it is what wrong. It is at that level that you will become a very good programmer. Are there any questions from the people online? Well, I mean, no, sir. Victor, your mic is breaking a lot. Can you repeat the question or can you type it in the chat so that I can see it from there? Benjamin. I was asking if I, because I don't know if I could get maybe what I missed. It's still very bad, but I can't hear you. I'm sorry. It's still very bad. Okay. Yeah, hello, can you hear me, please? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, well, my question is actually on loops, but uh, some part of the questions that came in the mid same. Okay. That I think, and there's some clarification. I don't know. Okay. What yeah, is the... It has to do with the, I think, uh, after class and then the after and then the uh, interfaces. Okay. Okay. The difference between the two. Yeah. Mm hmm. So you're asking me what the difference between an after class is and an interface is? Yes, please. Didn't you go and read on it or anything? Uh, I did some reading. Uh -huh. and so what it's did still you not very clear to me. What did you read that's <laughs> not very clear? Uh, you tell me that one. <laughs> you do that. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> I think uh, after class and then... the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that question. <laughs> yeah, I think the other one too was the static and then instance. The, the one after we really yeah, yeah, right now, yeah, yeah, after are running people. away from that here at all. You said abstract. I'm, 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 I'm pointing out no the two that were giving me issue. Uh, yeah, so. Stay there. <laughs> hey, why are you going here? Hey, stay there. Okay, so. Uh -huh. I think uh, after class, it, it's more of a it defines some uh, condition to be met by the class. So a class kind of extends it, and then it has some abstract methods in there that needs to be uh, implemented by the class. But that comparison with the interfaces, I wasn't so sure of the differences moving on from there. So. An interface cannot have a state. An interface cannot have a state. And an interface is not instantiated. That is, uh, 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 I cannot write, let's say if it was an interface, I cannot do this um, scanner dot uh, scanner, then the object's name, new scanner dot in. I can't do that for an interface. The interface is normally, uh, if we are looking at it from a practical point of view, say I want to do something, okay? So the interface, its job is to sit between what I want to do and the area in which it will be in. Let me use this as a, as a shallow example. Let's say I have a database and I have a... a, a, a a, 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 a UI in which I want both of them to communicate with each other. The UI cannot directly go and communicate with the database. Because if there is something wrong from the UI, maybe someone inputs some wrong information or he, he does something wrong, direct access to my database will affect the usage of my database. Hence, I would want to filter through it, make sure the information there is correct, make sure the information there 
matches the format in which I want. Make sure it matches my organization's uh, 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 structure. Hence, I would build the interface so that to pass through it and get into my database. So what happens technically is that you would build an interface and you will let the interface communicate with something. So the interface, we don't initiate it. We don't allow the interface to have a direct growth. It always accompanies something else. But with the abstract class, we can allow that to be instantiated. I know the answer I'm giving is a very technical answer, and some of you are like, hey, they're not quite working, but that is the uh, uh, <laughs> explanation for it. The interface, okay. it must go through something, because with interfaces, you don't want them to have direct access to things. So you go through the interface to get access to something. So if I have to go through something and I can create the thing for it to have direct access on this own, then what is the purpose of it going through something? Anyway, I hope you understand. Thank you. Because my mind is not so, Victor, I got your chat. Um, yes, you did some things in the, class, in the beginning of the class, but the class was recorded. So you guys will get the recording for the class. So I don't think that would be an issue. You just have to play back the recording. And if you have a question, if you have a question, you know, you can send me a, a WhatsApp with your problem. I'll, I'll reply. Okay. And then uh, okay. for the mid semester, I am yet to mark it, to be honest. I will mark it uh, tomorrow morning. So once I mark it tomorrow morning, then I can have a comment on it. But for now, I don't have any any comment on it or anything like that. So those are the two things you asked in the chat. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 So thank you all for 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 coming to class. Please, the video that is in, I'll resend it again. Watch it. And I will be okay, sending sir. some more um, so that we can learn a bit ahead because the one session a week is not enough. And also, yes. let's not make the class all about the one session a week. Let's make it so that when you are home, you practice. If you have issues, I know you have issues. If you don't have issues, then you are not practicing. Me, I know. I know. Because most of you <laughs> forget a semicolon somewhere or a comma somewhere and all of those things. And those will be problems. So the fact that you are not saying anything tells me you, you are not doing anything in the first place. But me, I won't say anything because I know when I should say something is when I'm holding the red pen. And then what I will say is permanent. It will not change. So let me say something now that is not permanent. Anyway, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, sir. And thank you so much, sir. All right. Okay. Yes, yes, I would. Mm. If you have any issues, just let me know. Okay. Again, thank okay, you. Sir. Okay, sir. Meet again next week. Thank you.